Yo, Karla Fretta, my name is Ardalur, and today I'm going to show you guys how I color grade my videos in Premiere Pro. Now, I use Cine 4 for filming, so if you are a Cine 4 shooter as me, then this is going to be an extra beneficial video for you. But even though if you don't and you don't even use Sony cameras, there is still like a bunch of things that you'll pick up um, because I'm basically just going to break down everything. What I'm trying to say is this, stay and watch, this is going to be a good video and a hell of a ride. We are going to dive deep. All right, so welcome to Premiere Pro. Now, go up to color, and here we have the color space, and then you have blue matrix color here on this side. Now, before we start to color correct, I just wanna show you the scopes I use, these scopes here. So under you, here you have Lumetri scopes. If you don't see Lumetri scopes here, you can go to Windows, and then you can find Lumetri scopes here to get that up. Now, there are three things that I have open here, and that's this, this is the waveform Luma. This tells you, you know, the brightness of everything in, in your video. So all the way up here in 100, this is like the brightest of whites. And if you go above it, you don't really have any information anymore. And down here is the darkest. And if you go below it, you know, there's not any information anymore. So if I show you that we drag the exposure here all the way up, you can see how this lifts up. And above here, we've clipped the whites and you can see there's no like really information anymore. And Vice versa, if you go down here, you can even do it with the black. So we take the blacks down. Now, down here, we've gone too far and there's really no information here in the blacks. We don't really see it anymore and it becomes very muddy. All right, this is exactly how the video looks like. So here, this is me. I'm here in the video and the computer monitor here, that's the computer monitor. And then here, this is the light source here. All right, then we have the RGB parade. This tells us the value of the reds, greens, and blues. Basically what this tells us is like how, where we are in the white balance. The higher the colors go up, you can see if we take a red up, you can see that the red really starts to go up. And if we take it down, you can see that the blues start to go up. All right. And here, this is a nice tool to have too. This is like the vector scope U Y U V. And this tells us like where we are in the color spectrum. So if we drag the orange up, you can see that this starts to move. And if we go above this line, we've gone too far. And you can see here, this tells us just what colors are here. Even if we start to push magenta, it's gonna to go to the magenta side. So it's kind of tells us where we are in the color and how much saturation there is, okay? So what I start by doing always when I have a clip is I go to basic correction, because first I want to make sure that our white balance is correct and that our exposure is correct. So a nice little tip you can do to get a quick white balance is to establish like a white point. This shirt should be white here. Then you can take the pen and whenever you, wherever you click, Premiere is gonna automatically assume that this should be white and it's gonna make it white, okay? Now for this, I know that I shouldn't go this far because I have a like orange light source that is bouncing off. So this is a little bit more or orange, but it's a nice starting point. And sometimes, you know, it's just straight on. So I'm gonna drop this down to minus six, like so. Then I check the exposure. I know that my skin is very nicely exposed here. This is a controlled environment, so I don't really have to do anything. Now, how do you know what's what's a good exposure for, you know, skin tones? You can use uh, Ansel Adams uh, zone system. So this tells you, you know, here, very light skin should be in zone uh, V, what's this, Roman, this is, should be like seven. So this here, and if you have dark skin, you're here in the middle. And this represents that the middle is here in the 50, and I am should be here in 70. And if you want to see like exactly how much exposure is on my skin, you can go to effects control, go to opacity here and drag, like create a mask around my skin if you want to make it perfect, like so. And now when you go to Lumetriscope, you can see that this is just showing my face and it's in the 70s point, so it's nicely exposed and we can delete this. Now this is all in a controlled environment, so it's really nice. I don't really have to do that much because I have a lighting source here that it's shining on me and I know the exposure values. And sometimes I have to do more, sometimes I have to like, add way more whites or drag down the highlights, especially if I'm out in a run and gun situation. But once I'm happy, I add a little bit of contrast. I'll go like around 20, like so. And then I'll come back to it later. Now I'll go to creative and here I add a LUT. Now we are gonna add the LUTs, my LUT pack here, down, down here. And here we have a bunch of different LUTs. And the one I'm gonna use here is this, Tig Sjöpargatan. Now already this looks cool, but it's a little bit too much. So then I mess with the intensity. Let's have 60. And I think this is starting to look good. Then once I've added the lot, I go and mess with the vibrance and saturations. We can drag the saturation up to somewhere around here. And it's already starting to pop a lot. And the vibrance, I like to drag that up too. So already, I mean, this could be finished now, I think. It looks pretty good, but I have a few more things that I still then do. I go to the curves and here 
I play with this curve here. If you've no idea what this is, <laughs> I'll make a quick course on it. So basically up here you have your whites, down here you have your blacks and everything in between. Here is like the mid-tones, here's the shadows and here's the highlights. If you go above this line here, you make everything brighter. If you go below, you make it darker. The cool thing is that you can add notes and isolate different parts. So if you wanna just mess with it brightest here in the highlights, now you're just messing with them, okay? Now, the classical thing to do with this is to create an S-curve, which is basically just contrast. So you drag it here and then you can drag the down, the shadows and up like so. And you create it uh, like your own contrast. But lately, and I don't know, no, maybe it's because I film like an S gamut uh, three cine that I like to isolate just the bright dark parts here by doing so and make them a little bit darker. So take a look, I might create a bunch of nodes like this and Oh, no, not like this. And then here, I just drag this down just a little bit. And what this does is it makes it the dark spaces here. So if you press before and after, you can see how this is a little bit gray. And now this becomes a little bit dark. I think I really like how this looks when it's just like this. And if I need to, like sometimes I need to do more, I might go, okay, mid-tones, I drag them a little bit up. And then I just drag them slightly, slightly up. So now I really have a bunch of, bunch of nodes and I can just choose wherever I want to make adjustments to. And vice versa, I go here and I drag this little bit up. And as I said, if I need to do more adjustments, I'll do them here. Now, a few things that are awesome with the, with the curves is also these here, all this really. So here you have hue versus saturation. Basically, you can see the colors here and you can click wherever you like. So let's say I want my orange and my skin tones to pop a little bit more. You can create notes just here. So now you're isolating this hue and by dragging it up, you're making it more saturated and then you drag it down, you're desaturating. So we can just add a little punch to my skin like so, because I'm a pretty orange man. And let's say we think that the blue is too much, then you can do the same. You can take the blue and you can drag that down. All right, very, very, very simple. And if you double tap always, you reset, reset things. So with this one here, here you can add saturations to different parts of the color spectrum. So for instance, if you wanted to like make just the mid-tones more saturated, you can go here and in the middle, this is the mid-tones. Down here, you have the blacks and here you have the whites. And if you drag it like so, you can make the mid-tones just more saturated or desaturated. But that's not what I like to do. What I like to do, I like to add one here, one here and drag this down like so. And then one here and one here and drag this down. What this does, this desaturates everything that is in the darkest of area. So it makes sure that the dark gets, like the blacks are black. You don't have like a tiny bit of blue hue in it. Like often with a lot of LUTs, that's that's just the nature of a many LUT, especially if there's like more heavy, heavy color graded. Here, you just make sure that the blacks are black and up here, if you do the same, it's the same. The whites will be white. This is very subtle, you don't really notice it, but then again, you do notice it. You know those things where it's like very subtle, you don't really notice it, but you kind of register, like it looks more nice. So I do this. Then once this all is done, I do a one last check here in the basic correction. Is this nice? Would I, would I would like to add a little bit more contrast? Or is it like, should I add up the whites? I just do, you know, a final check-in. And this is basically it. Now you can see the before and after, and it's pretty, pretty nice. Now let's take a look at it in an, on another clip that is like an un uncontrolled environment. Then it's the same again, basic correction. Now I think that this looks like pretty nice just to begin with. We don't really need to do much. I think the white balance is cool and let me see, we can, we could add the whites a little bit up, take always checking here and the highlights just a tiny bit up too, like so. And then we can add contrast, okay? Finished, I think this looks good. I don't really have to do anything more. And you can see that this is almost flushed. So, I mean, this is nice. Then you go to creative and let's add a nice lot. So to speed up the work progress process, let me see, teal and orange film look, boom, we have it there. We can take this down just a little bit and then saturation we can take up like so and uh, vibrance like 20 like so so already this is making a huge difference then you know it's just to go down to curves and i do my thing where i like to isolate every part here and i would say for this one i would just add like slight slight more to the darkness side and a little bit up here and then hue luma luma versus sat boom down boom down finished and you can see now that the before and after i mean this is huge and what this took like 
five seconds. All right, so that is the process. I start by going to basic correction, making sure that the exposure and the white balance is nice. Then I add a slightly contrast there. Then I go to creative, add a lot of choice, mess with the intensity, then saturation and vibrance. When I'm happy, I go down to the curves. I do my little thing with the Kirby. And then down in the Luma set, I make sure that the blacks and whites are black. And afterwards, I take a final look if everything is cool. And then I give it up. This is nice. If I'm color grading like a vlog, which has like a bunch of clips at the same time, basically what I do, I color grade one clip, just like I did now. Next to those clips are usually clips that are very, very similar. But as the nature of vlog is, they're all different. But what I can do then, once I've color graded it, I go to effects control, go to the Lumetri, which we just applied, the Lumetri color, copy it and paste it onto the next clips. And then I have the base, because this is like the similar. And then I go through the same things, but I just adjust it. it takes much less time because already added the base thing. And I might adjust the exposure on this one, might check the white balance of this one. So that's basically how I do that. Now, if I'm in a controlled environment, like now we're in a studio where everything is going to be the same, nothing is shifting here, I have a light here and everything. I make an adjustment layer and add that on top. All the changes you make to adjustment layer will apply to, apply to the clips below. Then I just color grade it once, color grade it and drag it across the entire thing. Boom, color grading made easy. Don't have to think about it more. And all the clips, you know, the entire tutorial like I'm doing now, is going to be color graded the way I like it. And I don't have to go through every easy angle. <laughs> that was a hard word. I don't have to go through each and every single clip like I do in a vlog. I mean, it takes time, but if you want to be good, you need to do that. Go through each and every clip and make sure that they are nice. All right, so that's it. Now you know my color grading process. This is how I do it at the moment. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask in comments down below. Also, my LUTs, the LUTs that I'm using here are available. I'll leave them also in the link below. If you buy them, you support me and I'm highly thankful for that. Whew, how long have I been filming? Half an hour. <laughs> this is taking me some time. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.